It is the most common question asked of IVF specialists. If everything looked good, why didn't my embryo stick in the uterus? And what can you do about it? Find out in today's episode of Infertility TV. There are two main parts of IVF, making an embryo in the IVF laboratory and putting an embryo into a woman's uterus. The first part, making an embryo, takes place outside of the body, so we can see the embryo and even do testing on embryos to find the ones that are most likely to implant in the uterus. IVF experts across the world are in agreement that most of the embryos that humans produce are not capable of producing a baby. For lack of a better term, they are bad embryos. But how can you tell if an embryo is bad? Well, sometimes you can tell, but sometimes you can't, at least with current technology. The most common method used to find good embryos is by looking at them under a microscope. We know that good embryos divide in a certain way and look a certain way under the microscope. Signs of a bad embryo include not dividing at all. After fertilization, the embryo is supposed to divide into two cells, four cells, and so on. Many embryos simply don't divide. In some cases, the embryo may divide for a short period of time and then stop dividing. IVF experts say that these embryos have arrested or stopped growing. Embryos which don't divide or stop dividing should never be transferred into the uterus as they have no chance for producing a pregnancy. Dividing too slowly. The best embryos have divided into eight cells by about the third day after removal from the ovaries. By the fifth or sixth day, they should reach the blastocyst stage, which is over 100 cells. It is very common to see embryos that are dividing but are dividing too slowly. These slowly developing embryos have a lower potential for implanting and producing a pregnancy. The slower they develop, the less likely they will implant. Fragmentation and degeneration. When a healthy embryo divides, it does so evenly. Two equal size cells, four equal size cells, and so on. Sometimes, however, you can see that small pieces of the cells have started to break off. So instead of eight cells of the same size, you have seven cells and a smaller eighth cell with a whole bunch of little fragments of cells. The more fragments that are seen in an embryo, the less likely it is that the embryo will implant. Sometimes the embryologist will be able to see signs that the embryo is dying. For example, the inside of the cells might start to darken or turn black. Even though the embryo may not have stopped developing yet, it will stop soon. What causes these problems with embryos? There are three main possibilities. It may be that the sperm which fertilized the egg was bad. It could be that the egg was bad or that there was a problem with the conditions in the IVF laboratory. It could even be a combination of all of these problems. Sometimes an embryo may look perfectly normal under the microscope, has divided normally and divided fast enough, but could still be a bad embryo. The only way to identify these bad embryos is by doing additional testing on them. The most common type of testing that can be done on embryos is to look at the chromosomes. A normal, healthy embryo that has a good potential to implant in the uterus will have 46 chromosomes, 23 of which come from the father and 23 from the mother. However, a huge number of embryos that humans produce do not have the correct number of chromosomes. These embryos are the result of mistakes that are made during the fertilization process. 95% of the time, these mistakes are due to problems with the egg. In fact, as women grow older, more and more of their eggs become bad quality, and so older women are more likely to produce embryos that don't have the correct number of chromosomes. Older women, therefore, have lower implantation rates and higher miscarriage rates. Sometimes embryos have the correct number of chromosomes, but the chromosomes themselves are abnormal. For example, chromosomes can have a chunk missing. This is called a deletion. Those missing pieces may contain important genetic information. When that information is gone, the embryo can't develop normally. And when you put it into the uterus, it doesn't stick. Testing for chromosome abnormalities in an embryo is possible. It's a big topic, so I won't cover it all here, 
but you should check out this playlist on pre-implantation embryo testing. So what can you do to increase the chances that an embryo will stick? We talked about the three factors that determine the quality of an embryo, the egg, the sperm, and the IVF laboratory. First, can you improve egg quality? The answer is no. There is no evidence that diet improves egg quality. Yoga does not improve egg quality. Supplements do not improve egg quality. Acupuncture does not improve egg quality. Exercise does not improve egg quality. Using different fertility drugs does not improve egg quality. Stop wasting your money. Can you improve sperm quality? Possibly. Why is this different? Why can you possibly improve sperm quality, but not egg quality? It has to do with the difference between how sperm and eggs are made. Women produce all of the eggs they are ever going to have in their lifetime before they are born. Men make sperm continuously throughout their lives. You can't change what has already been made, but you may be able to affect something that is about to be made. Since there are many extra sperm that won't be used, it is also possible to select sperm for those that have the highest quality and would produce the healthiest embryos. There are a number of different techniques that can be used to select sperm based on different features. Finally, differences in the IVF laboratory make a big difference. At IVF1's state-of-the-art IVF laboratory, we focused on the smallest details which can improve the chance for producing a healthy embryo. This includes maintaining perfect air quality, making sure that every patient has their own incubator, and ensuring that culture conditions are optimal. If you want to ensure that your IVF has the best chance for sticking on the first time, check out this playlist on first time IVF success. But before you go, make sure you like this video. And don't forget to subscribe to Infertility TV now. It's like having a fertility specialist in your phone.